Hey guys, how's it going? Turn is upon us and uh, we're ready here to uh, rock and roll this turn season. Um, every year we're trying to improve what we're doing and our system. And uh, it is very crucial this year that we all understand how important the turn boards are and, um, and how the payroll system is gonna work. Now, since we have some new people, uh, I'm gonna go over some of the logistics of what's about to happen, okay? So uh, hopefully some of this information is very beneficial to you. Uh, I want you to use it. Uh, attached to this video, we're gonna have a PowerPoint, and the PowerPoint is gonna have the steps that I'm gonna be talking about what is about to happen. But this video will be a quick reference to you on your cell phone, okay? So, what's the first thing that happens? Move out day. The day the students move out. Uh, this is a very stressful uh, day for the management and their team. Uh, what's about to happen, let's say 731, July 31st, uh, hundreds and hundreds of students gonna move out. Uh, and they have to move out by noon. At that point, the manager and her team have to walk the units and they have to assess damages and they have to do trash outs. Um, this is very time consuming and, and very stressful. Um, we, uh, our job on that day is that for us is to get there and get our control center unit. Now, because they're gonna be so busy, we wanna do that in the evening, afternoon time, somewhere after 4 p.m. We already have talked to the management teams and we have told them that we need a control center unit uh, that needs to be in the first floor because we're gonna be going in and out of this unit through the turn. Uh, so it needs to be accessible, okay? So we're gonna have a crash pad for you. They're gonna give you keys to this unit. This unit may not be clean. It might be a little clean, might not. So we're gonna tell you what you need to do. Be prepared to clean it up and sit up because that's gonna be your home for the next 10 to 14 days, okay? So we are gonna be chipping a box to your property uh, as an example, uh, the property in Bloomington for Edgar and Ohio for Edgar, we already chipped your boxes, and those boxes are going to be in the main office um, or your home if you give us that address. But what's in that box? What are you going to have in that box? Well, let me tell you right now. The first thing you're going to have in that box is you're going to see your t shirts. You're going to have all the t shirts for employees. Uh, I suggest you give two t shirts uh, per, per person. Uh, you may have some new clients that. Uh, that are new that you don't know, you maybe just wanna give them one t-shirt and try them out, okay? The following thing you're gonna have on that, uh, oh, something I want you to notice in the t-shirt is different this year. My cell phone number is not on it. <laughs> we have a customer service phone number uh, that you're gonna have on the t-shirt that you can use, employees can use about pay, uh, about questions about the term board or materials, this is the number to call. Uh, try to please only call me in case you have you know an emergency or or any doubt any question and i prefer you send me a text okay all right guys so uh the next thing you're gonna see in your box is gonna be a little box with uh several office materials um a lot of people in the previous years like what are all these materials for where they all have a a meaning behind them the most important things are here you're gonna have your sharpies uh that you're gonna use on your turn board and then you're gonna have five different color of highlighters okay and they're all each highlighter is gonna be for a separate week of the term board okay one of the examples the term board is already gonna tell you which highlighter you're gonna use that week okay the orange highlighter is not to be used is only for an emergency and I'll explain what it is okay and it's gonna be explained on the on the PowerPoint as well and we'll go back to to the week here but each highlighter is gonna be for a separate week Okay, and then some other items you're gonna have here are gonna have a, a white out in case you make a mistake on the board. We want you to make sure you clean it out. We wanna make sure we don't double pay somebody uh, or, or pay for something that was not approved. We wanna make sure we take it off the board and make it clean. Uh, pens, zip tags. So he's like, where do you need a zip tag? Uh, the management may give you a bunch of keys that are loosened and you wanna put them all together for a, for a whole building. Uh, scissors, staples, index cards, uh, pretty much just things that, uh, that you're not going to think that you need, but you may need them and you may not. Tom tags. The Tom tags are to be put to use on the board so you can put them on the wall, okay? All right. The next item you're going to see on your uh, box is you're going to find uh, two clipboards inside your box. This is for you to do your walkthroughs. You can also use your cell phone as your per uh, personal choice. But what you're gonna see on your clipboard, and you guys are gonna be responsible for printing this out, Alita sending it to you guys each personally, it's a copy of the big turn board, but a small one for your clipboard, okay? Here, you can keep track of everything as you're walking and make all the notes you need to. 
Why I want you to make all the notes in this clipboard? Because this big boy here has to stay completely, extremely clean. Okay, and I'll explain why later. This is what accounting is going to be using to do our payroll and the money that we're going to make and the money we're going to pay. Okay, so I have to stay extremely clean. All the chicken scratch notes go in the clipboard. Okay, in addition to this, in the box, you're going to see pay sheets. This is to be given to the con subcontractors, the painters, and the cleaners. In the sheets, and you're going to see this in the PowerPoint, you'll be able to write down the prices of what you're paying per room and per common area. And the sheet, this is the beauty of this year for the sheet, the sheet is going to match the week. So you're only going to give the sheets, for example, for the, the yellow ones from the week from the 723rd to 729 for that first payroll of next week. It's gonna be yellow. After that, in your box, you're gonna have green sheets, pink sheets, and blue sheets, okay? Um, they're very simple, but you're also gonna have a sample of one filled out already in your box. So you'll be able to just save your sample and copy it. Tell them by Sunday night, they have to turn this sheet into you so you can make sure it matches your board, everything you have of that same color, so it matches, so that way you prevent from having disputes come uh, Friday when the check comes in. Now, the check is gonna have a stub and the stub's gonna show exactly what they're getting paid for. It should match what they have on the sheet and it should match what they have on the board. You don't have to turn these sheets uh, to us. This is for your own use to make sure your term board is clean, okay? All right guys, so D-Day is here. Now it's uh, the first morning uh, of turn for us. We came in last night. We set up our control center. We bought uh, some water, some materials. We have our turn boards up on the wall. Uh, now we go to the office uh, somewhere between 8 and 9 in the morning to pick up our first list. Um, we want to get the painters going as soon as possible. Uh, always keep in mind that the first day is always going to be the slowest day because everybody's trying to figure out where the paint is, um, how, to, how does the paint matches, how, how are we going to mobilize around the property. Um, but the most important thing, you go pick up your list. And here's an example of the list. As I mentioned before, the list can come on a paper, uh, on a spreadsheet, on sheets, separate sheets, uh, on a text message, or they can call you towards the end and say, hey, help me with this unit. If somebody calls you and says, hey, I need this unit, you say, okay, please send me a text message because I need proof that that, that was requested, okay? So let's use this as an example. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point this right here, and like I say, it will be a lot easier once you, if you watch the PowerPoint while looking at the video, it will be a lot easier. But let's say that the manager gave us these units, some full and some partial. Uh, for the new people, a partial unit, let's use, for example, 104B. That means that everybody in that apartment renewed their contract and said that bedroom B. That means we're just going to go in there and do just that one bedroom. Okay. The first thing you want to do, regardless of how the information was delivered to you, is you want to open the item on the board. So today is August 1st. So apartment 101AB, Chris, if you can uh, zoom in over here. Apartment 101, uh, comma A and B. This is what you're gonna do. You're gonna put the date, so 81 for August 1st, okay? I can tell you how crucial it is that every line on this board needs to be as perfect as possible. The person, the people entering this information on our spreadsheets for payroll and invoicing they're gonna be looking over at 20,000 X's, okay? It cannot be sloppy. On the PowerPoint, I'm gonna show you an example of how a messy turn board looks and how a clean one looks. But we're gonna make this one really, really clean, okay? So it says, 101, common A and B. The turn board already is gonna tell you that that apartment is a four bedroom apartment. Here's the type of apartment it is. If it was a townhome, he already says TH on it. So you will know that it's a townhome. All you have to worry about, you don't have to worry about anything else, that put in the X's. The people of payroll are gonna know what the value of that X is for payroll and for invoicing. Okay, so the apartment is common A and B. So we're gonna open common and we're gonna open from left to right. Left to right. Why is this important? Because in the middle of a term project, when we turn in payroll, I want any open item that hasn't been completed to be from left to right. I don't want it from right to left. I mean, from uh, from up 
to down. I want it from left to right going up. That's an open item, okay? Common A and B. All right. And then it says one or two, a full unit. Well, one or two is a three bedroom apartment. And we're gonna open that one up. All right, so I put the first two on the board. One or three is another full unit. And we're gonna open that one up here, okay? All right, I'm gonna enter the other three. Let's move forward to all of them enter on the board. All right, so now I have entered the first list that I was given to me by the manager. Uh, the first thing you wanna do is make sure you have full understanding of what the units you're about to assign. The first unit is a four bedroom apartment uh, and it says one on one and we gotta do common A and B. That means that C and D are renewals, they stay in there. There's a difference between the bedroom being black, which means it does not exist, it's only a three bedroom apartment, and a difference between two bedrooms that are actually people living in there. So what I want you to do when it's a renewal is you're gonna put an R right here for renewal. The same thing with 104, we only do in bedroom B. So we wanna put an R here for renewals. Meaning we don't have to do those. It could happen that later on during the turn, the manager walked this unit and said, you know what, Ray, uh, I want you to do that common because it really doesn't look that good. That's what you're gonna use the white out for and you're gonna open that item, okay? So you wanna strategize how you send the, the, the workers out there. Um, let's say the first group, uh, we're gonna call Mike, uh, we're gonna put Mike here, we're gonna give him one on one and one on two because we wanna get him out the door. We're gonna put Mike, Smith. Okay? And when I give him the unit right next to it, Mike. It needs to be clean. It needs to be clean. One. Okay, so you want to get all the painters going and the, the very first that you're no, you're getting to know your painters and how they're gonna move. But you wanna get them going because they get paid by the bedroom. So they're they're looking at the clock, it's like I'm not making any money, it's 10 a.m. You wanna get them going. After that, after you get everybody up your control center and going, you get them set up with the paint, uh, and you open the doors for them. Now, you are gonna go walk over there and say, hey, the moment you finish with your first unit, I wanna walk it with you. You wanna set up that quality standard right off the top, okay? You also gonna have an idea how long that crew uh, takes to do a unit. So moving forward, you know how to distribute the following list. So you gotta check on the quality, uh, make sure the first couple units are like be more picky on the first couple units because you're gonna walk them with the manager and, and that's gonna set up the standard. If you walk the first couple of units with the manager and you show them, look, this unit looks great, look how well it's clean, her defense is gonna go down because like, you know what, these people know what they're doing. If you walk the first couple of units and there's a bunch of red flags, the alarm's gonna go off and they're gonna be picky with you all the way, okay? So, Let's assign uh, the other two units over here, the other two groups. Let's be smart how we assign the units. Let's try to keep them as close as possible to each other because they're gonna be moving buckets of paints around. So there's two, there's four units on, on the, apparently here on the first floor, and there's two units here on the third floor. So let's, let's assign the people to the first floor separate from the third floor. So. We're gonna put Jose Rivera here. You also need to know what the what the crew size is. If Jose Rivera has a crew of five people, well, you don't want to assign him right now a, a bedroom because this is not enough work for just for that bigger crew. You may have a crew of one or two guys that you want to you know assign him a full unit and a partial to keep him busy. You have to keep him busy and going out there. It will make everything smoother for you. So now you have sign, you got your three crews that are going out there and they're painting. So Mike tells you, hey, I finished the first unit. 
I said, all right, the moment the painter tells you, hey, this unit is complete, the moment he tells you it's complete, not that you have walked in and approved it, but they tell you, hey, this unit is complete, you're gonna close that unit with the X, okay? The X means it's a make ready paint. What's a make ready paint? A make ready paint is when the paint matches and we are gonna go paint the unit what is necessary as long as the paint matches and we don't have to paint every single inch of every single wall, okay? Now, you haven't approved that yet because you haven't walked it with him, but so I'm finished with that unit. When you go walk it with Mike and he may have a little callbacks and now you approve it, now you're gonna initial it. I put in your RD. This means that I walk that unit and I say, you know what, this unit is good. The manager hasn't walked it yet, but as a supervisor, if I say that the unit is good and the manager finds something, it has to be so minimal because I approved it. It has to be so minimal that it's something that can be touched up. If, if you walked it and you approved it and the manager has to give it to another company, which is not gonna happen, that means that mean we got very problems because I mean the supervisor doesn't understand what, what a done unit is, okay? You have to approve it I prove it, it means that to the naked eye, the, lunet, the unit looks really good. If they find something, it means that they're you know, being picky about something or there's just something minimal uh, that, that we can touch up ourselves or, or bring back the crew to do it. All right, so now the crews, uh, it's been a couple hours uh, and they are calling in, asking for more units. We're gonna move forward to the following building, but we're gonna start closing some of the ones that they did on the first building. And then I assign the other units, I'm gonna have time to walk them. I already. I already know these crews now. I know the type of work they do. Uh, so now I let them off the leech a little bit. I give them more units, and I'm gonna walk the. I'm gonna. I'm gonna close the ones that they say they were done. Okay. All right. So we have a, a unit here. That Ellis is telling us that it was actually a call change, and we we uh, the painting match. We talked to the manager, and she approved it to be a color change. We still gotta close it, but the people at payroll is gonna have to charge it and pay it differently. We gotta pay the the worker more, which is gonna be in the pay sheet, the rate, but we also gotta invoice more. So instead of closing it with the X, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a C because on our spreadsheet, a C means for a different charge and color change. That way, when payroll uh, is working, all they're looking at is this right here, the unit number, the person, and the charges, okay? The comment section, which I wanna keep as clean as possible, I would like for you to use uh, a pen or a pencil, uh, but I don't want charges here. I want all the charges to come from here. Anything extra, like a ceiling that got painted, uh, a sheet rock repair, um, a, you know, a resurfacing job that was asked to be done is going to be on a separate sheet that we're going to show you after this clip. It's going to be a sheet where all the extras are going to go there all by themselves. That way here, it's all about bets and common areas. All right, so now I assigned the units to the other building. So the guys are all gone from this building and I have time to walk the units. I went ahead and walked the units. Had some my if it's a minor callback, that is five minutes or you know five to ten minutes. I'm always walking with my little bucket of paint, my little uh, bucket of cleaning, and I go in and touch it myself. If it's something bigger that's gonna take you longer than ten minutes, you want to call them back. If not, you want them to keep on going because the faster they go, uh, the more units they, they knock out, the more money all of us make. So you want them to keep on going. We want to close bedrooms, especially if there's another company on the property. It's really a race. I mean, you want to have good quality. But you want to help your guys move forward because we can always get more bedrooms from the other company that were assigned to the other company. So I walked them. I did a little, little touch-ups. I called uh, Ellis. I had a callback. It was a little bit bigger on the call change. He came back. He knocked it out. Now, later on that afternoon, I was like, you know what? Let me look at my notes from my, um, from my walkthrough. So I I'm going to use, I'm going to put all that in here. And then I'm gonna use my notes like, all right, call back. I did this. I did. I fixed this. He fixed that. And now I sign off on it. Here you can write anything you want, as long as this stays clean like this. Hopefully with a better hide right in the mind. Okay. Um, so now I'm gonna approve them. Okay. 
Now, these units are not ready uh, to be, be included on that week's payroll, okay? This is the first week. So that night, when things are settling down, I'm gonna go ahead and look at what week it is, and I'm gonna grab my highlighter for that week when the work was done. So it was done between July 23rd and July 29th, and I'm gonna highlight it. I'm only gonna highlight the spaces where work was done. We don't have to highlight the name or the initials or the R's. All you want to do is highlight the spaces of what needs to be paid. As I'm highlighting, please understand how clean that needs to be. Like I mentioned before, AP is going to be looking at so many X's and it needs to be clean and sharp. Uh, you need to go back to when you were six years old, make sure you stay in the lines as best as possible, okay? Uh, sounds funny, but, but it means a lot to us that it needs to be very clean and very sharp. Uh, and in the sample I'm gonna show in the PowerPoint of a turn that we just closed this week, you're gonna be able to see how easy that is to read. And anybody can come up and look and understand exactly what's going on. Always gotta think, hey, what happened? Let's say maybe, you know, God forbid somebody gets sick and they can't continue and we need to send somebody else. That person needs to be able to walk in and understand exactly what's going on with this turn board. Exactly. Like, oh, you know what? These apartments were done. This one was a color change. And by the way, there's these apartments are still open for work and they haven't been assigned to a painter or it's open and it was assigned to Jose, for example. Okay? So now is the evening of your first day, and you this is the units that you were able to walk. I suggest that you highlight everything you have approved that same day. Do not let it snowball until Sunday night, because then you're really gonna be behind the able trying to get everything done. Plus, it would really help your workers that have these sheets for that week to be looking at those yellow X's to match during the week, and that way uh, you can turn in your payroll on time. You have to turn in your payroll on Sunday night. Uh, we're going to give you instructions. You're going to send it to Donna Thomas, and they may have some questions on Monday morning, but the worst thing that can happen is if you meet the deadline for your turn, uh, your payroll, and then your employees don't get the checks, uh, and then we'll get in some trouble, okay? Uh, so now the next day, the manager is going to sign you, if you're the, doing the painting and cleaning on the property, he's going to sign you the cleans for, uh, for the units you paint. Do not send the cleaner straight to those units until you have confirmation or list that you're gonna clean everything you painted. If there's a, another local cleaning company, they may be doing some of those units. So you wanna make sure that you wait until you get uh, the list from the manager to assign the cleaners on the very next day. And, uh, and you're also gonna get a new list of paintings. You're gonna sign the painters to new buildings. The painters are always gonna be ahead of the cleaners, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and move forward and enter the information uh, on the board for the cleaning. All right, so now we have our list of everything we have to clean. I want you to notice something, uh, an example of something that could happen. This bedroom that we painted in 104B, uh, it was only one bedroom. The resident, these are his friends, and he was moving in. So he decided to take his assets on the cleaning. So the manager did not assign it to us, okay? Um, now we're gonna assign the cleanings to the different crews we have. Uh, same formula. Think about how big your cleaning crews are, if you have a, a person that is by itself, try to keep it to some partials, meaning a bedroom here, a bedroom there. You want to create momentum for all the people. If you put that per single person in a four bedroom, uh, in, a, in, in a four bedroom apartment, if that's all you have, that's fine. But if you if you put in there, it, it should be there all day, okay? Uh, so you want you want to strategize how you assign the units. All right, so 
one thing that I want to reiterate in and make sure you understand is that the name for the crew, it has to be very, very, very clean and it has to match what's in the W9, okay? If it doesn't match here, uh, let's say the person has a nickname that is easier for you to remember, then you need to create a, a legend on your paper saying, this person, Mike Smith, goes by Yo-Yo. As an example, we have a lot of workers who, uh, you know, like Taco, Davis Dad, for example, he, uh, we always put Taco on the painting crew, but then we put the name that goes on the check up here on the legend, okay? So it's very important that, the most important thing that it's readable. Um, for example, Leo Hernandez is, is Jose Hernandez, but we call him Leo. Well, here we need to put Jose Hernandez. If we put Leo, then we have to put here Jose Hernandez equals Leo. We have to let accounting know who it belongs to. Uh, we are not gonna cut any checks unless there's a W-9 fill out for that person. Um, and the W-9s are gonna be another thing that's gonna be in your box. If it's not in your box, you're gonna print it out along with your mini term boards, okay? Uh, but we're gonna, we, we're gonna try to put them in all the boxes so you have a big stack of them. Please make sure when they fill out the W-9, and we can make a whole video about W-9s, make sure that it's legible, that the name is clean, that the address and the number they use, in is, uh, you know, you can read it, and it's sign and date, okay? All right, so now we're gonna move forward to, uh, to these units that were closed on this week on cleaning. So Eva Cole said her units are done, uh, so we closed them, so we're gonna sign in more units. Uh, now it's my turn to walk them with my sparkle cleaning bucket uh, and make sure they look good. Uh, Eva did a great job, I approved them. I had to call her in the last one and say, Eva, come here, help me out, this oven can look a little bit better. She did it right there with me and we sign off on it, okay? Now, let's say it's a Sunday night and Eva did those on a Sunday, uh, but we couldn't get this clean on Sunday and now the new week started on Monday. This means that uh, we're gonna highlight these guys yellow up here because the, the, the first week closed. All right. All right, so those were completed within that week's payroll. However, these apartments uh, neither were completed or approved within that week's payroll, so they roll into the following week. So now Monday, Nicole came in, she finished them out. Uh, now it's Monday afternoon, she told me they're done, and then I went and walked them and I proved them. Excellent job, Nicole's heck of a cleaner. And now that evening, as I approved new stuff, everything from the previous week, everything's yellow, so I don't have to worry about that. I already turned that into invoice, which is the next step. I'm gonna explain how you do. Uh, but that night, Monday night, I'm like, you know what? Let me get a head start and other everything that I approved so far for this week. And that's gonna be the following week happened to be the green one. And we're gonna go with green. All right, so let's move back to uh, Sunday night. So you finish your week, you have all your boards, everything you approve, and everything is yellow. What's gonna happen? You're gonna download on your phone an app called Genius Scan, and, uh, and, and our team is gonna be sending instructions to you how to do it. It is a very simple app, and what it does is you take a picture, and the app turns that picture into PDF format. You're gonna do that, and you're gonna make it on color, and you're gonna send the pictures to payroll of everything you approved that week. They're gonna only pay attention to the color of that week and that's gonna be the color of the week. That's what they're gonna cut checks for. And like I said earlier before, the beauty is that on Friday when the checks gets there, the worker's gonna be able to see all the units that were, let's call yellow for that week. They're gonna see this is exactly what I could pay for. It matches my sheet uh, and it's on the board. What you wanna do to keep it simple, you're gonna send three emails, okay? The first email is gonna have the painting. You wanna take a picture, you'll see this better on the PowerPoint, but you wanna take a picture of this right here. You're gonna send the paint separate from the cleaning, okay? You're gonna send one email that has got nothing but paint. And let's say it's the first week, well Donna and her team are only gonna pay attention to all the yellow X's, 
okay? The following week, the following Sunday, when you say the payroll in, they're not going to pay anything that was in yellow. They already pay that. They only get benefit pension to all the excess in green, and so on and so on. So uh, only take pictures of the excess for that week that matter, meaning everything of that color. If you have 10 buildings, but you only have green highlighter on three buildings and it's the green week, we'll only take pictures of the three buildings that matter, okay? All right, so the extras, the other turn board sheet is gonna have all the spaces for you to put a cheer rug repair, ceiling, accent walls. What you're gonna do is you're gonna write up the, you're gonna see it on the sheet, you're gonna write the apartment number, the crew who did it, and the item. The item is gonna vary, but the pricing is being provided for you in your turn superv uh, supervisor uh, spreadsheet. When you're gonna pay for that extra, you wanna highlight it of the color of that week. But like I said, you wanna keep all the extras away from where the X's are at. It, that's gonna be separate. But you wanna include it on, your, on the picture of that week. So you're gonna have the first email is gonna be all your painting boards. The, the second email is gonna be all your cleaning boards. The third email is a very important one. You're gonna have all your W9s, and you're also gonna have any adjustments you may have. What kind of adjustment you can have? Let's say um, Eva Paris uh, had to stay back uh, after she was done with her stuff because I needed her help to walk some units that, that were priority and that were not hers, and we had to do callbacks from Nicole. Nicole, let, let, she's gone for the day, and she has some callbacks, she can finish it, so Eva help me out. So you're gonna create an adjustment. This is gonna be on the email. Adjustment number one. Eva Pedro gets an extra $20. Nicole Smith gets minus $20. Let's say you have a, you have a person who's like, you, to convince them as a local person, you're having trouble finding people. And instead of 45, you have that one crew who's like, you know what, I'll go in, but I'll do $50 a common area. And you gave in and you say, okay. Well, as a partner, you can make that decision when it range. And that's the kind of, that decision you can call, uh, call the customer service line where a leader can help you out, or, or you can reach me via text and say, hey, Ray, what do you think? But you can make a decision like that, you know, I, I have this special group that I really need them because I'm behind. So you pay them five extra. Well, the X is gonna be worth 45 on our spreadsheet, but you decided to pay that group five extra. Well, let's say you counted three Xs for that week on the common area, and the adjustment you're gonna be, I pay this person $5 more per common area, so extra $15 for Eva Paris. All right, team, so uh, this short video uh, and uh, non-Hollywood video is pretty much what the term words are in a blink. Uh, the most important thing is to understand is that you open items, you close items, you approve them, and you keep the names are clean, and you send your, you send your payroll on time with the highlighted color of that week. We all get paid by the bed. You guys, us, the workers, you have to keep this board clean. This is a clean looking board. You have to clean, keep it that way. The PowerPoint is gonna be very helpful. You're gonna see uh, what an unclean board looks like and what a clean one looks, an actual examples from a property. But uh, at the end of the day, it's a very simple system. Uh, if, you, if you don't understand something, please reach out to us. Uh, we got time to go over it and it really is, takes five minutes to explain it. Uh, but hopefully this video helps a lot. Uh, we appreciate your partnership and we're looking forward to a great successful turn 2018.